gateway.management is one of the more disruptive applications available in the marketplace. It runs by blocking all outbound egress traffic to the internet, all 30 million do domains, and it allows you, based on rules that you set, to only allow out what you need to allow out. This gives you a tremendous amount of security. The way it works is it does not install anything on the client. So if you live in a world where you have multiple clients, uh, customers using your internet, or um, a BYOD type of environment, any application or any device that signs on to the internet basically is covered by gateway.management. I'll take you to the administrative portal and show you how this works. It basically has different layering technologies where you can block the bad, which is a blacklist approach. You can allow the good, which is a whitelist approach. We have what we call auto whitelisting that I'm going to show you in just a second. Or you can go as far as to say don't talk to strangers and only allow in the very uh, well-known and trusted domains that you want to allow in. You can do this based on a set of rules that you can mix and match. You can base your rules on location if you've got multiple sites that you're uh, managing. You can base it on active directory or, or user group uh, types. You can base it on applications or you can base it on the time of day. So if you were looking to block internet access based on the time of day because you're only open from 7 to 7, the time that you were closed you could actually shut down and only allow access to the internet from the server or through the administrative IDs. Let me show you what the end user experience looks like when you use this product. Now again, there's no client that's installed on the device. When a user goes to an internet domain that's never been gone to by anybody else inside the network, this only needs to be done one time, we we'll use the New York Times in this example. The first time someone goes to the New York Times, they'll get a block, up screen, a block screen that will require them to request an unblock. Now that only has to be done once, but the value here is it validates that the spelling and the domain is one that they know, and it gives them a chance to say yes, it requires human intervention. If you think of uh, malicious software like the Adobe spoof virus that came up recently where users got a pop-up that said your Adobe's out of date, would you like to update it? When they clicked on yes, what happened is that software then reached out to a malicious domain, established command and control and wreaked havoc on the, on the environment. In this case, what would happen is when it reached out to that domain, it would prevent the, provide the user a pop-up screen that looked like this. It would show them the domain they're going to. It wouldn't be adobe.com, and, and at that point, they'd have a chance to say, that doesn't look right, let's stop. Once that request has been submitted, this one for the New York Times, you can go back to the management portal, look at the requested unblocks, and you can search down for New York Times and open up the results of that search. What's happened here is the gateway auto whitelisting approach has taken machine learning, scrubbed through the New York Times site and all of its associated domains. As you can see, it determined that the New York Times was safe. There are several subdomains that it's also allowed, but there are also a lot of subdomains that were determined either through uh, categorizations of adult, dangerous, malware, ads, profiling, not to be acceptable sites, and so it blocked those sites. So from an end user experience, when they come back to this, to this browser, usually it takes about a minute to two minutes to go through this process. They will then be given access to the New York Times, but there will be ads, you'll see white space on the, on the uh, site, and there'll be profiling malware activity that's being blocked. What's, what's going on right there is actually speeding up the user experience because it's taking those calls that would originally go out to these sites that are creating that adware profiling environment and it would block the outbound traffic so it never leaves out to go to the internet. That not only speeds up the end user experience without taking away a tremendous amount of value uh, by being able to read the site, but it also speeds or reduces the amount of traffic that's outbound. There's been studies that show that this kind of blocking can reduce up to 40% of your internet traffic. That can be a tremendous uh, drain 
on your on your infrastructure. 